Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian Christy here. We've reached another Friday, so of course I have another film rec Friday ready for everybody out there. Now today we are going to do something a little bit different primarily because I've found myself in recent weeks in a sort of a viewership predicament that I haven't been in in really ages and ages and I feel like maybe a lot of other people are probably in a similar boat right now. Uh, anyway, do you ever find yourself either finishing a film or finishing binge watching a TV series and then just wanting more either of that particular title or something in a similar vein? Or maybe you are, you know, watching something that's currently airing and once an episode's done that seven day wait for a new episode feels like interminable and you just you just really need something to fill that gap. Well, what I've done is I've taken three properties that are really, really popular right now, super duper current, and I've picked three sort of comparable titles that can maybe fill those gaps for you. Uh, and what's great about these three recommendations today is that even if you aren't following any of these uh, particular properties, you could still very well be interested simply because these are great, great, great things to watch. There are loads of entertainment and they're fun and they're just they're just great great films and tv shows uh as always these recommendations are available entirely for free with the use of your mylan berlin library card and you can get them either on dvd and or blu-ray on our clevenet service or you can stream them via hoopla or canopy so without any further ado let's get to the recs so last week, fans of the Teen Wolf television series were graced with this long, long, long awaited uh, original movie continuation of the show. This original movie aired on the Paramount Plus network and it actually broke. Let's see. Let me, let me make sure that I get this right. It became the most watched original movie in its first day of the network's history. And this is the streaming service that brought us all of the Yellowstone prequels. It's, it's very popular and it has a huge viewership. And for this particular film to break all of those uh, first day records is a pretty big deal. It means it had a lot of eyes on it. Now, the TV series was fairly well regarded by both critics and fans. Obviously, the fans were very, very, very invested in it. They managed to get a movie continuation even five years after the show ended. But here's the thing. While the TV show was well received, the movie, as many people have watched it, has had sort of mixed reviews. Uh, if by, I think mixed is pretty generous. It's had fairly poor reviews, both by critics and the fan base. It's been, it, it's, it's been interesting to follow the reactions online. Anyway, uh, what I've done is <laughs> whether or not you hated the movie continuation or you loved it, I found a show that I think a lot of people who enjoyed the Teen Wolf TV series will still really, really enjoy and that can maybe sort of fill that gap. Uh, if you want to ignore that the movie existed, if you still want to feel like it's complete canon, it doesn't matter. You might still like this show and I think that uh, even people who weren't into the Teen Wolf series might like this one for some very specific reasons. And my recommendation for fans of the Teen Wolf show uh, is 2011's TV, uh, TV series called Grimm. Now Grimm is available on DVD and Blu-ray via our Clevenet service and I'll put the links for that below. Anyway, in Grimm, we are following Portland police detective Nick Burkhart as he sort of becomes aware of some latent abilities due to the fact that he comes from a long line of these warriors called Grimm's whose primary job throughout the generations has been to hunt down supernatural creatures, which they call Vesson. Now, this series is absolutely fascinating to me. I discovered it a few months ago and I legit binge watched all six seasons within a couple of weeks. I was that caught up in the storytelling, the writing, and I think that the way that it looks at these Vesson or the monster of the week is really, really what kept me coming back because it does such a good job. Okay, so 
these supernatural creatures are very clearly based on um, really very well-known myths and legends uh, throughout the globe. You know, yes, it's called Grimm. So there, there, there are lots of stories based around creatures from Grimm fairy tales. You have the equivalent of werewolves. You have the equivalent of um, other creatures that go bump in the night that um, sort of fill all of those rather scary fables and folk tales for, uh, coming out of Europe. But you also have monsters from Eastern Europe, uh, Eastern Europe, from Eastern Asia. You have uh, monsters from Africa. You have indigenous uh, American uh, creatures. You, you, you have these amazing myths and legends brought to life on screen in a way that I haven't seen any other show do. And I thought that was so cool to be able to explore that. And, you know, there were definite episodes where I would, you know, finish the episode and run to the internet to, to find out where they've pieced this creature because they, they do call them different things sometimes. Um, anyway, the other aspect that I really enjoyed about the show is the way that the Burkhart character approaches the Vesson. He definitely doesn't have his hard line of all Vesson are evil. That's very much not the way he does things. Um, and he develops relationships with different supernatural creatures uh, that are just, you know, hiding within the community because they're everywhere. It's like, you know, the, the main crux of this show is that there's this whole hidden world that nobody, none of the mundanes happen to know about. And, you know, he has relationships with a blue button, which is clearly the equivalent of a werewolf. And I am so sorry, there's a loud sound going on in the background. Apologies for that. Anyway, so Burkhart develops these relationships with other Vessen, while of course, still hunting down Vessen that are committing horrible crimes that clearly your standard justice system can't handle. Uh, and you've got very much in the first couple of seasons, especially a, a Vessen of the Week feel to it that kind of reminds me of early uh, X-Files episodes. Like, But as you go through the seasons, you have these longer arcing storylines about different characters' backgrounds and that you've been given breadcrumbs to from the very first season. And it's just so entertaining. Like I was every single episode, I was like caught in a new um, story, but then also pulling into this long reaching uh, tale of its own that the series had been developing about Burkhart and his background and, and his interactions with like these huge Vessen groups that we had no idea about in the original episodes. Uh, so as I've mentioned, the whole like global mythology approach to the show definitely kept my interest. So if you like things like that, 100% guarantee that you will enjoy the show. Um, but it was also like the, the, the different relationships that he developed with the different characters. The, the acting is really, really excellent. Um, you, you, he's got a ton of chemistry with, um, <sighs> He has a regular cop partner, but then his sort of Vesson uh, partner is also like really, really awesome. And the two of them, the, the way they play off of each other, because of course, um, his Vesson buddy cop partner grew up being told to be afraid of Grimm because that's what they always did was just kill all supernatural creatures. Uh, so he's got his own issues to sort with and the two of them forging this friendship over time. It's, it's, it's a really entertaining thing to watch and it's really quite, you know, meaningful in a lot of ways. And it does take several episodes for them to really get connected. But once they do, man, like they're bros till the end. And it, it's, it, it's, it's really great to watch unfold on screen. And the more Vesson you get to be introduced to and, and the different things that they're capable of doing and the way that they are able to sort of enhance the, the core group of people who are going out and solving crimes and mysteries and things is it's just really fun. So, you know, whether or not you are a fan of Teen Wolf, I do think you will enjoy this. If you like fantasy, if you enjoy mythology and legend, if you like the sort of 
monster of the week concept if you enjoy buddy cop films and movies this, er, and television series definitely definitely check out grim it's six seasons you can get all of them through our cleanet service and it's a definite must watch all right if you are anything like me or actually a huge chunk of the globe at this point you are probably anxiously awaiting the next episode of The Last of Us. Uh, you know, like I mentioned in the intro, that seven day wait, man, it is interminable. <laughs> and, you know, I am always just looking for something to, you know, help pass the time that maybe delves into some of some similar themes. Now, I could list off, you know, a ton of fairly comparable movies and film and uh, TV series that really do delve into that trope of um, gruff, isolated guy uh, attempts to assist young, innocent, seemingly helpless individual travel to somewhere or other. Uh, I mean, like you've got Logan, you've got um, A Quiet Place, you have The Walking Dead TV series, you've got The Mandalorian. I mean, I could rattle off so many more, but those are all super duper well known. You may have even already watched a lot of the ones that I recommended. So I decided to go a little bit off the beaten path with that and maybe recommend something that I think still has a very similar vibe, but that you might not have heard of. Uh, so if you enjoy a story that kind of revolves around the idea of a young woman struggling to survive in an incredibly harsh definite science fiction slash fantasy realm, you might want to check out 2018's film Prospect. And now we have Prospect available through our Canopy service. Uh, and the film follows a young woman named C, who's played brilliantly, by the way, by Sophie Tucker. Um, and C travels with her father, Damon. Uh, they are trekking to this alien moon to essentially go on this prospecting dig that will ideally make them a large, large sum of money. Now, Damon, her father, has some issues. And when I say issues, I mean all caps issues. Uh, and that's really clear from the very get-go of this film. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to tell in some spots, like, just how close the relationship is, but the two of them, they're on their own. It's just, it's just that little bubble. So they kind of need one another. Now, uh, not only does Damon have issues in caps, but he also has money troubles and we don't really get the sense that those money troubles are going to go anywhere anytime soon. Thus their decision to go on this sort of prospecting dig that's very clearly quite dangerous without anyone ever having to tell us that it's dangerous. Uh, anyway, he treks them out to this remote place and they get to the surface of the planet. They start their dig and then things just go wrong. <laughs> like anything and everything that could go wrong goes wrong. And we end up having to follow C as she traverses this very alien landscape on her own with with very slim hopes of survival and it's that feeling of dread and desperation that sort of pulls you in very very quickly within the show uh you do have other characters uh within the film but she's primarily just with one other character, uh, who is, by the way, played by Pedro Pascal, who is the, uh, male lead in The Last of Us. Uh, see, there's another connection. Uh, but his character is very definitely not Joel. Um, <laughs> uh, Pascal's character in Prospect is named Ezra. He is morally gray at best. Uh, and while there is some of a redemptive arc within this film because it's just a film and not a series we don't really get to see a whole lot of that so we really don't know 
where this character is or how it's going to change or shift. It's we, the ending of the movie is quite open-ended, but in the best of ways. And, you know, like I mentioned, your primary focus is on C man. And she seems like really helpless and hopeless at the beginning of this movie, but you see very quickly how she in fact is incredibly resourceful incredibly driven and definitely a survivor. So yeah, if you are interested in movies that really, really focus on that sort of desperate feeling that you get with these kinds of post about post apocalyptic, um, survivalist films and, and television series, this is definitely one that's going to grab you right away. Uh, it's, it's filled with phenomenal acting. I mean, uh, Tucker does an incredible job. Like there's not a huge amount of dialogue in this. There's so few characters. Uh, she's, she's just able to express so much with her face, uh, rather than having to speak and, you know, like that, that concern and fear. And like at many times that hopelessness is right there. It's all written out, out for you to see. Uh, Pascal's character, uh, is, creeptastic in the best way he, a, a, a creeptastic character could be, uh, you definitely get a sense of menace from him, but you also get this sort of shifting gray morality that's going on there too. So you do feel a little bit of that redemptive, uh, shift within him too. And he, and Pascal's always a phenomenal performer. Um, some of the other smaller character roles, doesn't matter how small it is, you, you do find that all of the acting in this is, is spot on. So if you're looking for something with strong acting, again, this is a great choice. Uh, and if you're just looking for a really good sort of science fiction film, uh, it's a quick watch and it is very, very, very much immersive from the get-go. So again, 2018's Prospect, it is available on our Canopy streaming service. Okay, so my final recommendation for this week is tied to Tom Hanks's A Man Called Otto. Now, A Man Called Otto has shocked me. Uh, it's It's gotten critical acclaim, which not surprised at all. Tom Hanks' movies generally do uh, get good critical response. But it's also had a huge amount of pop popularity within just regular viewers. I mean, it even managed to sell out the local theater on a number of nights. And this is not like a blockbuster action movie. It's not Avatar. You know, it's really quite a quiet, funny, introspective movie. <laughs> that's that's just not the kind of movie right now that we're seeing fill up movie theater seats, except it is done precisely that. Now, if you if you're one of the people who went out to the movie theater to watch this and you're looking for something similar. Well, A Man Called Otto is based on Frederick Bachman's novel. Did you know that Bachman's novel was actually originally adapted into a film in Swedish uh, in 2015? And that film is called A Man Called Ove. Um, this film is not a departure from A Man Called Otto. It's just one, yes, it is in a foreign language. It is Swedish, so there are subtitles. But this movie is so well put together, acted, uh, screenwritten, that I, I really have to recommend people watch it. Whether or not you've seen A Man Called Otto, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely worth the watch. Um, in A Man Called Ove, we are following Ove, who is sort of the quintessential angry, grumpy, get off my lawn old man, right? He has, you know, recently lost his wife and it's just, he's just kind of done with everything. Uh, so at the beginning of the film, we're essentially watching him struggle to end his life to be with his recently deceased wife. Like he's, we see him try on multiple occasions, but he just kept, keeps getting interrupted. Now that's super macabre in a lot of ways, but the film manages to do it in these almost lighthearted ways. I, obviously suicide is a very serious topic, but the film manages to make it really approachable. Like, his reason for doing these things, I, I think 
the movie does a good job of getting you to the place where you understand, where you can see that, that like why he would go to this conclusion. And when every time he attempts, he gets interrupted either by like, you know, random people coming to his door, the new neighbors, whatever, it, it becomes kind of funny because in, in, a, in a dark way, but like, I mean, it's, it's just really funny. He just can't do it. Like, like he's trying to find an end and it just doesn't. Um, and along the way to this attempt to end it all, when he interacts with all of these other people, we start to see him open up again. Um, we get these amazing flashbacks to his earlier life, like where he meets his wife or, you know, different interactions he has with his father, with other people within the community. And you see how he gets to be this, you know, isolated, grumpy old man. But you also see that his life is was so full. You understand the relationship was so strong with his wife, why he feels so empty at the end. And along with these flashbacks that sort of show you his journey through life, you get these pockets of interaction with people in his life today, you know, or even with a cat, which I mean, as a cat lover, I loved all of those moments too. I loved them in A Man Called They, I love them in A Man Called Otto. Put a cat in a film and I'm going to like it. Anyway, um, we see... Ove really opening up and and starting to allow himself to bond with new people, but also to sort of rekindle old bonds with people who he's known throughout his life who've had, you know, either fallouts or whatever, for whatever reason. Uh, and, and watching this trajectory of this character's later years is really quite moving. And it's, it's, it's really beautiful. I mean, again, you've got these odd mixes of dark humor and like a little bit of tragedy because some of the things that happen to him there, it's really, really quite sad, but you also have like these huge swaths of sort of beautiful, uh, character development. And, and it, it's just a joy to watch. I mean, I, I finished the film and I just felt sort of like satisfied and happy with the movie. Like it's not like a cheer at the end kind of movie, but it doesn't have to be. It, it still makes you feel warm and it makes you feel, I don't know, it just makes you feel really good. So um, if you get the chance and if you happen to have been a fan of either Tom Hanks's A Man Called Otto or Bachman's original novel, or you're just looking for a really beautiful movie about the fact that it's never too late for change or, you know, to develop friendships and bonds, check out uh, A Man Called Ove. Uh, it's available to stream on our Hoopla service and it is an absolute must watch. All right, so those were my three recommendations for this week. If you have any recommendations for comparable films or series for one of the three that I had covered, or if you have another series that you know is really popular right now that you think you have good comps for, make sure that you comment with those below. Uh, if there's any other currently airing series or film that you think we should all know about, pop that in there too. Uh, if you have any recommendations for themes that you'd like to see us cover in the future, definitely recommend those. Always looking for help with that. Um, as always, thank you so, so much for joining me. I really love putting these things together. It's so much fun and it gives me a chance to really do those deep dives into our catalog and see what's out there and available. If none of these recommendations for whatever reason appeal to you, make sure that you still check out our services. We have literally thousands of options there for you. You will find something that you enjoy. Uh, so with that, once again, thank you for joining me and hopefully I... We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.